Hello everyone, uh, today I'd like to do a quick overview on um, what ratio you should expect for um, the X and Y uh, resonant frequencies of a Core XY printer. And I specifically say Core XY because um, on typical, typical Cartesian printers, your X and Y belts will be essentially independent. Um, each one is not interrelated. Um, the tension on one belt could be completely different than the tension on the other. But with Core XY printers, um, since both A and B belts are operating um, during X moves and Y moves, and ideally both would have the exact same tension, um, you can do some cool math um, since essentially the, the stiffness of both belts are the same. Um, so let's do a quick overview of the math that I've done and look at some of the trends we've seen uh, from data that has been gathered by the Voron community. So here we're going to look at the CAD. And so why we are looking at the CAD is we want to understand what components are moving in the X and Y axis directions. So again, we're ignoring Z because essentially Z is moving so slowly um, that in most cases the resonant frequencies of Z are, are kind of not important. Um, this is not always the case, but in, in our case, we're going to assume that. Um, so we want to look at the essentially only the X and Y axis assembly. So in this case, uh, here's the essentially gantry. Um, the entire perimeter around the outside is directly connected to the frame. Um, so theoretically, that would be moving the same relative to the bed. Um, so we're going to assume those are stationary. But then for X ax axis and Y axis moves, uh, we have two two kind of component or assemblies that are moving. So the first one is this entire x-axis. This entire mass is moving in the y direction. And then if we're going in just the x-axis, this everything that is not highlighted is actually stationary, except for this tool head. You can add the mass of the belts because the belts are also moving. Um, but in this case, we're going to assume that the belts are essentially massless. So we have two masses. One is the mass of the tool head, and the other is the mass of the tool head plus the x-axis assembly. So why is this important? Well, let's jump over to the definition of natural frequency. So if we scroll down on this page, we'll get the equation for natural frequency. The natural frequency equals the square root of k, which is your spring stiffness, divided by m, the resonating mass. Um, if you take essentially um, two of these over and divide them out, so the natural frequency of x divided by the natural frequency of y, you'll end up with e a ratio where if k is the same for x and y, it cancels out. And that is really what is key here with the core xy printer, because k is the same for both x and y axes. The same belts, the same tensions are, are driving the printer in both the x and y axes. So then you end up with a ratio of masses, the mass that is moving when the x-axis is moving and the mass that is moving in during y moves essentially. So um, this is really the fundamental um, kind of theory that is driving this discussion today. Um, if you know the masses, then you can know the ratio of the natural frequencies. So let's jump over to Excel and look at some of the data or some of the calculations um, where we try to add up those masses and then predict um, what our ratio of natural frequencies between X and Y are. This is a really rough, you know, quick estimate on, on these values because honestly, I didn't take the time to completely disassemble my printer and get these direct measurements. But where I could find the correct values, I used them. Um, so first of all here, um, we're going to look at the three different printer sizes um, because I was curious if you could see the difference. So we have 250, 300, and 350 uh, kind of stock designs for the Voron. I assumed the afterburner was around 450 grams, including all of the fans, uh, hot end, all the screws, hardware, etc. Um, I'm not exactly sure on that number, but it's, a, it's approximately correct. And then remember, attached to the uh, afterburner essentially tool head, we do have those MGN9 carriages, uh, two of them. Each one is 26 grams. Uh, I found that from a data sheet. So essentially this, uh, this 502 grams is going to be the same in each of the different printer sizes. However, the Y axis will be slightly different. So uh, here's 2020 uh, extrusion weights. Again, 
Um, I believe, yes, this is uh, grams per uh, millimeter of 2020 extrusion. Um, so that value changes over uh, the course of the 250 to 350 printer uh, because essentially the x-axis grows longer. Um, again, we have uh, two MGN9 rails that also grow longer. Um, and so um, this is, I believe, again, the weight per millimeter. And then we have two MGN9 carriages attached to the very sides of the x-axis. So again, 52 grams. I estimated uh, values essentially for the XY joints and then also for the, the X cable chain, which is essentially moving in the Y axis. And that gets us to essentially the X, max, uh, X mass and a Y mass. And so um, let's see here. So, and this isn't quite true because the Y mass is actually, um, this is the Y mass other than the X mass. So the total mass moving in Y is actually the sum of both of these numbers. So if we, if we do that, um, essentially the X mass divided by um, the sum of both of these numbers and then do the square root, um, we get these ratios here. And so this is essentially saying, if we look at our X frequency, that is our peak resonant frequency and our Y resonant frequency, because the mass of Y is always going to be greater than the mass of X, because essentially Y is the mass of X plus whatever X axis rails, extrusion, screws, etc., are moving in a core XY printer, um, the Y frequency will be lower than the X frequency. And this is really a key piece of information because um, in some of the resonance tuning prints, um, I've noticed people get confused. I'm not sure if it's due to the print orientation or maybe there's um, multiple resonant frequencies on the y-axis that are like overlapping that are causing it to look like it is vibrating at twice the expected frequency. Um, but I've seen a lot of cases where uh, people are estimating their y resonant frequency to be higher than their, their x, which is impossible essentially. Um, so double check your part orientation when you're printing the resonant, uh, resonant uh, test print uh, because the X axis should be aligned with the, uh, sorry, the X on the print should be aligned with the Y axis of your uh, printer and vice versa. The Y on the back of the part should be aligned with the X axis. Uh, I've heard, uh, I used Prusa, Prusa Slicer um, and with that it was lined up correctly. Um, but potentially with different slicers, it could default to different positions. So it's definitely something to check. If you check that and your values still do not look correctly, um, go ahead and um, you know just kind of guess, I would say. I'd take your X uh, value, which seems to be fairly consistent, and then um, you know maybe use one of these values um, and find your Y frequency. Um, I haven't done a lot of, a lot of testing on um, the tuning prints to see if um, a Y frequency greater than the X frequency will actually um, essentially make a, a bad print. Um, with the input shaper, it actually covers a wide range of, uh, range of frequencies, so um, and if it's close enough, it may just end up canceling it out anyway. But uh, for best practice, uh, remember these ratios. So um, let's go from there. And let's uh, take a next step on what the data has shown from a broader, you know, range of printers. This is the theory, but let's see if it actually holds up in reality. So here's this data. Um, so essentially, what you're looking at is the x frequency on the y, uh, x axis and y frequency on the y axis, like you'd expect. Um, these solid lines here are those three estimated, uh, essentially, ratios. Um, so essentially, assuming your belts are equal, um, equal tightness, essentially, um, hypothetically, um, the values should end up somewhere along this line. Uh, tighter belts would be further to the uh, upper uh, right, and uh, essentially looser would be to the bottom left. Um, and there's two things, there's three things here. Um, one, the color represents what size the voron is. And then the star or square represents whether the estimation was from a print or if it was from an accelerometer on the tool head. There's some improvements to this data that could be shown to show like on the same printer um, with the test print and the accelerometer, 
um, essentially, you know, if it was up here with the test print and then down here with the accelerometer, you could draw lines to connect those. But essentially what this shows is um, with the test print, there can be a, a fairly decent um, error in the Y frequency. I'm not sure why again. Um, I don't know the root cause to that. However, when you look at the accelerometer data, it does kind of uh, kind of clump along this line. It's not perfect. There's some variation above and below. Um, and you definitely can't tell the difference between the different sizes. Um, however, it does get you into that range of maybe 0 0.6 to 0 0.7. Um, so X uh, resonant frequency times 0.7 or 0.6 equals your Y resonant frequency. So this is really kind of cool. Um, it's rare that there's something just so clear that you can take uh, theory and follow it through to, with data and, and kind of see what this, this is. What does it mean? Um, Honestly, maybe not a lot. It's just kind of physics. Um, however, it is interesting. If you're struggling with your uh, ringing test print, um, then it may be worth looking at what your X and Y ratio is. Um, if Y is greater than X, then start looking into the test print some more, maybe get your accelerometer um, in order to get more reliable data. Um, and again, remember this only applies to Core XY printers uh, because essentially both belts are equal tensions um, and both X and Y axes use the same same belt. So with that, I really hope you enjoyed this video. It was meant to be kind of a quick data dump of something cool that we found out um, that followed math. And it's, it's really cool being able to predict these things and see them in real life. Um, hopefully there will be more interesting things like this as we go along. But uh, until next time, have a good one.